Welcome to the 17th edition of the Euros 2024. Where else can it be held than a football nation as Germany, where the 17th edition obviously is being held now at the moment. Well, it started quite slow, but um, gradually uh, getting to the knockout stages, we're seeing games and teams trying to gradually pick up the pace. Some of the big teams haven't really lived up to expectation yet. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, as the knockout stages approaches now into the quarterfinals, uh, we'll be seeing some of the big teams. Hopefully, uh, they can come up again and then do what they've done over the years in the World Cups and the qualifiers and the and expectation of all football fans. But I think that from the knockout stages, it's been good so far, so good. And I've got King here tonight. We'll be talking about the Euros, um, the matches that have been played and the matches I heard. Important matches to be played in the quarterfinals. England played Switzerland. Oh, math watching one as well. We've got Netherlands with Turkey. Turkey, for the first time, getting to the quarterfinals of the Euros uh, will be a very good game to see after the heroics of the goalkeeper and the whole team uh, last night. What an amazing game uh, we saw last night. And of course, we got France, Portugal. Guys, France, Portugal. Big game, big team. Kylian Mbappe, could it be his game? Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, could it be his last tournament uh, to showcase what he has to show uh, for the world to see in the Euros? And so we'll be looking at forward to that game as well. And of course, the biggest of, of them all will be Germany, Spain. Yes, the host nation versus the most improved team in the tournament so far. So if you talk about the two uh, big teams that are playing really, really well in this tournament. It has to be Germany and it has to be Spain. And so I've got King here. King, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, I know you've been watching the Euros. And um, what has been your take so far out of all these uh, five groups uh, from Group A to Group F? Uh, we have obviously seen some uh, big games, but we also have seem to, you know, kind of uh, seen a couple of games that didn't really live after expectation, especially in the first two, three matches of the group stages? Well, so far it's been good, but like like you said, he has not lived up to expectation. Mm -hmm. um, some of the teams kicked off very well, whilst others were, I think, just finding their rhythm. So they haven't got there yet. For example, France, if you see France, if you watch a couple of games that France has had, they've never really found... I think something is missing in the midfield to gel them together. So something is off from the fans that we, we usually know. Also, the likes of Spain and Germany obviously have come off um, very, very strong, very... They've gelled, especially Germany, which everyone thought were no a team. But not a lot of people gave Germany a chance before the tournament, you know. And, and the book is... You know, the bookies paper was, was always going to be France, uh, considering their form, the players, Kylian Mbappe, the uh, the Traminis and the uh, Kamavingas and yeah. the N'Golo Kantes and, you know, Saliba. the, the Salibas. You can and, go on and on. You they, know, they, on they, and on they, and on. And you look at the team and you look at the players. But uh, for me, France perhaps have un underperformed as a team based on the potential of the team, you know, especially coming from the World Cup against Argentina in the last World Cup? I think that's where the pressure is. And I think, I don't want to call it pressure because I believe that they could do better than what they're doing. But I feel that they have not found, I feel like something missing in that in that team. This, is, I think with Rabiot not, not playing, we might see a different type of France because obviously Rabiot will be suspended for the yeah. game. And then we might have a Kamavinga, Germany and Kante midfield. So we'll see a different type, type a different game for France. And also... I believe that it's come to the stage where they either perform or they go home. So now the best has to come out or you can't keep riding the underperforming to the final. So yeah, eventually absolutely. you're going to meet, so far they're meeting the big teams now. So uh, now they have to perform. So you have the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Bruno Fernando, Bernardo Silva. So the way France has a good squad is the way Portugal has a good squad. Now mm. it's going to be who's going to step up and who's going to perform. So we expect to see a better France in this game. We've expected to see a better France, but... Well, like this be, I could this be the time for France to really show up? You know, because obviously a lot is expected of um, France, not just not just as a team, but 
I think genuinely on a football level where, you know, look at the quality of plays they have and um, they haven't entertained football fans. That's what fans do. They pay all these monies to go to the US and Germany to, you know, to watch these games as a form of entertainment. And you want to see the best of players. Yes, Kylian Mbappé broke his nose and everything. But I think as a team, uh, they've been quite off. But before we go on, let's look back into the teams that, you know, started the first uh, uh, group stages and some of the teams that really did surprise everyone. We did have a lot of teams coming from, especially the Eastern Europe, you know, the Slovenians and Slovakias and, you know, Czech Republic and Romania. Romania. And these teams Georgia. for Georgia for so many years haven't really, really been at the Euros and played this well. But we seem to have the Eastern Bloc coming in very hard this year and playing some good football. I think it was because of the addition, the uh, mm. additional teams in the, the expansion. In the group. Yeah, the expansion. So I believe that's why you. So for example, you never, you you would not have four teams in this yep. at this tournament, at this stage. So you have four extra teams which qualified, and yeah. what you've seen so far is um, a team that's never had the opportunity to be here. Mm. Now they have um, a stage. You have four more teams or how many more teams can come Coming into the in. game. So now you have the opportunity to showcase what you have. And I think for teams like Georgia and Romania, um, they have the chance, the opportunity to perform. And as you can see, some of the games, they actually did perform very well. Mm. And because it was for them, it was such a big game, like Georgia playing against Ronaldo was such a big game Eesh. that they had to perform and they won that game because for them, it was like the final of a cup. So yeah. they had to win the game and they were playing against one of the best players the world has ever seen. So when you you have the opportunity, you have to take the opportunity. And unfortunately, they went against Spain for the next round. And obviously, Spain is the best team so far based on performance in the in the they tournament. Fire, and um, they delivered. And some you can see the white, uh, white players are very... Very, very creative, very, very Nico good. Nico Williams. Though. Yeah. He, I mean, he's not new to... No. To, to, <laughs> to, you know, he's not new to everyone. No. But it's just doing it on a big stage is very, I, I very think, important. I think... I don't think it was not... Because it's not, I think he's new to a lot of people. But I think what it is, is if, you, if you're if you focused on La Liga or football scene, around, you you're, know, well, you're well you are not, you're yeah. diverse, you would not like Nico Williams. About, yeah. But if you're not well diverse and you focus on either the, the German League or the Premier League, or yeah. you, you tend not to know about Nico Williams. Lamim, but, Yamal, uh, Nico Williams potentially could link up at Barcelona, you know, after his 50 million price tag, you know, his release clause. So potentially they could both link up at Barcelona, what a team will be. But, I mean, look at Austria though. We can't, talk today without not talking about Austria I think Austria gave something fresh to the Euros you know as a team um, you know Ragnick's team and very very symbolic of, of Ragnick his team has always been um, based on the team not just the individuals and even losing to Turkey which was probably one of the most spirited performances I've seen a Turkish side play from the days of the Nihat and all the Hassan Sars and all these uh, players. I think Turkey, uh, Austria was a very, very good game. But Austria particularly has littered the tournament so far up until the, you know, the, the elimination. They, they, like you said, it's his team. He knows yeah. how to mold the way he wants his team to play, mm -hmm. the way he wants them to press, the way he wants them to go come forward and go backwards and defend and attack and how they start the pressing and how each player support the person. So one, one player goes, the rest of the team goes. Mm -hmm. Once the other player goes, the rest of the team goes. Once they fall back, they all fall back together. So I think they have been very good and they have shown a different type, type of football in a tournament game. And I think one of the one of the best games that they played also were against the Netherlands, which was quite an open game. And you could see the performance, but like you said, it's a very good performance. It's a very good team. They've only lost twice, and that's the total time since his, his takeover mm -hmm. as a manager. So it shows that they've been doing very well. But I just believe that the Turkish team has always had potential mm -hmm. for so many years since their last time they were in the US in 2012 yeah. or 8? 2008. Yeah, a couple of years ago, yeah. yeah, so the last time they were 2008 when they went semi finals and lost to Germany yeah. in semi finals. So I believe that they've been. They've always had potential, they've always had good players, they've always had quality players, but they've never gelled for a very long time. They've always always come in, but never got there. Yeah. Always come in, never got there. So I think this is a, 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 
a, a good tournament for them to show Are the Gula, their quality. Are the big difference, uh, you know, 19 year old, but I think he had a very good game yeah, yesterday. Yeah. I think he had a very good game. Two set pieces, and um, I think it's just also his mentality. You know, in, into the Turkish side, it, it changes quite a lot of things. You, you look at his approach, and you know, for a 19 year old to have that beast mentality it's, it's ridiculous you know it, I've, I've always said an age doesn't matter in football i think mm. we emphasize so much on the age of the player yeah. i think is the understanding the way the, fo- the, the the player understands and thinks about the football beats mm. the game that's what's more important than the number of the the, the age of the player mm. um i believe that when quality players step on a pitch they assess what they know what they're gonna do next. They can read the game. They can know where they're gonna pass the ball, how they're gonna cross the ball. They they know every step they're gonna take, yeah. and that is one. Day, uh, that's why those positions like the central midfielders, the defensive midfielders, the attacking midfielders, those are one of the key areas on the football pitch because yeah. they can read the game. They can they know who's behind them, who's in front of them, who's on the side of them. They know how the game is gonna be played, and I think you now you see why Madrid bought him, and you see why. Mm. He's been tagged that he's not going to go on loan because he has a very good potential for him. Big potential, and, Huge. And, and 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 you can see from his performance yesterday, yeah. and you forget that they did not have two of one of their best players on the pitch. They didn't have Hakan and Shinanu. Yeah. So, and he stepped up very well, and he played a very good yeah. game, and he was one of the leaders on the pitch. So it shows that age is not when you have the football brain. The age doesn't really matter because Quite you can interesting, though. Do. Interesting because. Turkey hasn't won a game without Hakan, you know, for for very long time. Without Hakan, they lose the game. And yeah. the interesting thing is they don't Hakan don't play suspended, and finally they play one of their best games of their lives. But let's look at Spain. A very well oiled, you know, they play with a lot of fluidity, passing into into positional changes, moving into the right space, and moving the ball very swift as well. They seem like a, a team that is is. Is you know, it's bounce back again after they fell off a little bit. They bounce back again with these youngsters, Lamim Yamal, and you've got some old veterans in there as well that are blended into the team. And it, it feels like they've been playing for the whole year or two years, and you know they never stop attacking, they never stop movement. What should Germany do in in terms of stopping their attack? Obviously, we know that they will have to put brakes on those two wingers, but generally, what should Germany do to? Uh, to stop this Spanish team, or what should what should they do? Because Spain seems to be like a team to beat. Spain loves to hold the ball. We mm-hmm. know they like the possession game, and we know this is this this Spain we're seeing is not the Spain of the last two or three tournaments yeah. because they, they they they've gone back to their old ways of keeping the ball, mm-hmm. of moving the ball with pace, with position. Yeah. They know what they want to do. Each attack, each attack is. It's like the old days when they had the Fernando Torres and the yeah. Davivia, which they came for you and they came to for the Jaguar. Each mm. time the attack is to destroy you, is to finish you off, and um, and they don't they don't rush the bo- the football these days. If you if you remember the last tournament, it seems like they were looking for they were trying to rush to score the goal. Yeah. But this time, when they pass the ball around so much, so much. If even when they're on one one. And a draw, they're still passing the ball, taking their time, trying to find that perfect goal. So we're seeing a bit of spin from the 2010s, yeah. the 2012, the 2008 sp- Spanish team yeah. coming back again. Although they're not the same players, but we're seeing that kind of football. I think Germany will have to, I'm not sure how they're going to do it, but I think high pressing game and give enough, try to control the midfield, not to give the midfielders enough time. To string the ball, so it, I think it'll Rodri, be a good. Rodri? Yeah, I think I think you have to. Um, he's playing; he's not suspended for the game. No, he's he's playing. playing, so I think the best thing they have to do is pressure him and not give them enough time on the ball, not give the midfielders enough time on the ball, which I think will be valuable for for them. And then uh, Fabian Luiz too. He seems he's be having a very very good game, mm. very very good matches so far during this tournament. So I think. You have to take away the the time Spain has on the ball and pass it on to Germany because that's the only way they can they can slow them down. If mm. you don't, if you don't, then I think it will be difficult. Or Germany has to go for the counter attack the whole game. So, do you believe that 
what people are saying, like, you know, the thoughts of people thinking that whoever wins that game potentially wins the tournament. With football, I, I always think is um, it's a matchup mm. because those two have played very well, but then on a bad day, you never know. They might meet Portugal, they might meet uh, uh, France, yeah. and it might just be a bad day in the office. And I believe that until the game starts, we would not know because you might put so much pressure. Like I always say to people in a game, sometimes you play one game with so much high expectation and the next, yeah, the game, next game it drops, isn't it? It drops. And so, and it's a Euros. And I think if you look at the matchups, I think there is so much pressure already because this is a repeat of 2016 final yeah. for France and Portugal. Portugal big one. And 20, 2008 final for Spain and Spain and Germany. So I think it will be, whether you like it or not, it will be... Uh, On the level. A very, a yeah, a very close, very, very close, close games. Contested, yeah. yeah, so I don't believe that it will be easy for any of them. But being, being, uh, having said that, I do believe that sometimes in football it could be very easy to, <laughs> <laughs> it could be very easy too. So I, I, but I think it's a very good matchup for people uh, to enjoy the Euros because yeah. I think it will be one of the most entertaining days of the European Cup because. I see it will be nervousness at the beginning, yeah. and one of the teams will be nervous because it is a it is a quarter final, and they play one of the best teams around the world. So importantly, now let's talk about England. Um, throughout the whole tournament, England hasn't performed. You know, yes, they might have gone to the quarter final stage, but they haven't performed. You look at the system and the style they're playing. Um, I personally, I just think that. Uh, Gary Southgate is a is a is a chunk. Is you know he has to be he has to take a chunk part of the blame. You know especially with the style and the system that he's playing. Also, I also think that there are quite a few players in the English team that are not world class. When I say world class, I'm not talking about Premier League players. There are only few players in that team that can get out of the Premier League and fit into any team else in the world. You can have the style of playing in the Premier League, not necessarily competing against teams in Europe with your English size anyway. That's not what I'm talking yeah. about. So I just feel like there are only few players in that squad that can actually go out of England and still command positions in different teams. For example, I just think that Rice has been very average for me. You know, I, I just feel Rice has been very, very average I feel Harry Kane is one of the problems England is facing as well. He's not playing as a centre forward. He's dropping in more deep. Even when they're defending, Point. yes, Very he's supposed point. to be a bit halfway the line so he can be an option when they get the ball. I noticed that he's always dropping deep and trying to be another number 10. This is the first time England has got two number 10s in, in the team. You've got Jude and you've got Foden. So why is he dropping too deep? So it, these are some of the little, little pockets of the game that like, is causing it. Like people want Foden to play at number 10. Between Foden and Jude, they can alternate roles. They can yeah. switch positions because Jude can do that already. Jude can go forward. He can go. I, I believe he can still go to the right and come in and dip in. Yeah. He, I think he can move around because he's had that free posi uh, free role a lot yeah. in Madrid. He's had him Borussia Dortmund. I know he moves around. I know he plays the number 10 and he plays the midfield. But he, he has a... a, a capability to move around. Foden has the capability to move around because a lot of people say they believe he can play number 10. I personally do not agree, mm. but let's give it that but he But he's, he's, he's moved in all the positions so far. He's been in number 10 position. Yes. He's been less effective. He's been on the left wing. He's been less effective. He's dropped. He's played almost every position no, that's up what, that's, front. That, that's what my explanation is coming. So that's I would say they, they can move around, but it's not working. With Declan Rice, I would say this. I said to Arsenal fans, yes, he's good. Yes, he's done well for Arsenal, but take away Odegaard and either Thomas Partey or mm. Jorginho. It, it doesn't he, work on, he, in, in the, in the three still, lines. He still yeah. missing something. And that's why Gareth Sadgate always wants to put somebody next to him. Mm. Because I believe he knows that he needs somebody next to him to support him. But for me, I feel you need somebody that can control the game, that can Absolutely. hold the ball, that can yeah. pass the ball, which was Meno. You've, yeah. you've played him one game and it seems he had a very good game so now you have to continue playing him mm. then for up front I feel England fans would not like this but sometimes I feel like Ken needs to be benched 
I know he's the number one striker, but sometimes I feel like if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then take him off the game and put somebody else that's going to run behind the defenders. Because sometimes you do want to give the defenders something to think about. You have Hurricane that's in front of you. Players are not worried because they're going to block the ball. They're going yeah. to they're going to attack. They're going to tackle. But when you have Hurricane running behind you like he does for club levels, people start panicking. People start making mistakes. In the World Cup, he did the same thing. He, when he was running behind the ball, he had a, pe pe a few penalty kicks yeah. from the World Cup yeah. because people make uh, harsh decisions, rash yeah. decisions. So I don't believe that he's doing enough. I don't believe that on the right hand side, I think after a few minutes, I think Saka gets a bit too tired because he seems to yeah. get the ball, but there's nobody in there for him to keep crossing the ball to. So you have a striker that is never in the box, always out of the box, always trying to drop deep. Isn't this interesting though, to have English style of football that has always had wingers, sharp wingers. I mean, talking about England has always had sharp wingers. And for the first time in the tournament, England isn't crossing the ball that much, either, especially from, from the left side. There's been very dead. I said, personally, I said right after the first game that, you know what, Ivan Tony should be in the team because I noticed that Harry Kane was dropping more deep trying to play a bit number 10. So for me... What would I do if this was my team for the quarterfinals? I would put Foden on the bench and then I'll play Jude, Kobe Menu, Rice in the middle. Do you know what I'm saying? And then play um, Ivan Tony up front um, and then Kane behind him, put another winger there and that's it and suck on the right. Because why am I saying this? I just believe that England should be playing three back and five in the middle to control the games because there's no much control. And you look at the positionings of the midfield, up until Kobe Menu started the last game against... Um, they had no control of the midfield. No, they, yeah. they, 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 the positioning was very far apart. Yeah. There hasn't been any midfield team in the world that has controlled midfield with a very wide space apart from each other. He, he, I mean, look he, at the talk he, about he, the Barcelona he, he, of 2008, yeah. the Real Madrid of recent. The, 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 I mean, you can talk but about he's done the Ayas and all he, this. He's done well with three, three defenders at the back. But yeah. I don't know why he's scared to play three defenders at the back in this tournament because you have the pace of Kai Walker and Gay. He's not that, he's not slow anyway. Yeah. And he's very good. Yeah. He's very good. And you got John Stones. So I have no worry for the defenders. The goalkeeper. Yeah, sometimes he makes errors, but I think you have three defenders behind him. Then you got a left back that's injured that will not be fit or might be fit for this game yeah. now. So I believe you should have got somebody else. Well, Shaw is in the team and uh, he's never kicked the ball, but he's in the squad. But I sh you should have got somebody else to play in that position. But I've, I, I just think that if if I'm gonna take, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna take um um what's it, Gallagher, I might as well take Grealish. Well, I'm not a big fan of Grealish, I've got to be honest. But I'm just saying that if you're going to take Gallagher, you might as well take Grealish instead because Grealish gives you something on the ball. Gallagher doesn't give you anything. I would have taken Ryan Sterling. Do you know what I'm saying? I would have taken yeah, Sterling. Yeah. In, in another sense, because think about it. If you've got Cole Palmer, who would play similar to you? He could play in those three positions in midfield. Yeah. Whether through the central, as, as a in transition, yeah. he can drive from right from there. So if you've got him, he can double up there, you know, with him. So why leave Grealish and take Gallagher? I don't get that. I, I'm struggling to get some of the some positions. Of, some, some of his, some of the players he took, I believe, I believe he just he he was he was pressured by the pundits, and I think he just took players based on what people kept saying to him to take because he took Underwood and from um, and then he left Red what, and then and then you play. Trent Alexander Arnold in midfield when you needed somebody to control the game while you have uh, Kobe Mano. So I just believe that he kept he kept making decisions that were for what he believes was going to work for England and it hasn't worked. And I think um, Oli Watkins can also, for me, I believe people might disagree, but I believe Oli Watkins can also play on the left wing too because he has, he has the he pace. He has got the pace and he's and, got the and, ball yeah, and got the he ball. knows how to play, yeah. so, get the strikers in market. So I believe that, I believe that sometimes I believe he makes... He, I would like to say he's scared to lose a game to three 0 rather than go for the game and 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 destroy the game and, f and destroy your opponent because it's like it's like what Anton Joshua said you you have to end someone's dream to gain your dream but yeah. you can't be scared going to end somebody else's dream you have to Absolutely. go out to end the dream so I believe that he needs to go out there 
he needs to put a team out there that are not scared. And I feel, and, and, and to be fair, I feel like the players want to play. I feel like they're restricted. They are so restricted because the last game you watched Kepa controlling the midfield and you can't, you, you see what they can do. And then you saw Jude Bernard in the first game after how he came went off or yeah. second game when he came went off yeah. and um, Oli Watkins came on and he, he made a true pass yeah, straight yeah, away yeah, to yeah. him. Because the movement, it's the movement up front. So, You're not getting that movement up front. So I just don't, I just, so, like, people keep saying take off Kane and I believe yes, you should take off Kane because sometimes there's no point leaving your, your striker on. I know he's a world-class striker. I know he's, his goals is, is proven but I just believe sometimes take off the striker and put somebody else or if he wants to, you want to keep him on them, take off somebody else and put somebody else to have that pace behind these strikers. And maybe when somebody early working comes, Ivan Tony, because I think Ivan Tony is a very dangerous, the way England plays, I think Ivan Tony will be very dangerous for them, actually. And then even sometimes I feel they need somebody to drive from the middle. And I think yeah. Iberi Eze has that. Yeah. That drive that he wants to yeah. run the players from the middle and you can give them chances to get free kicks and stop the game. Yeah. And I think that's what Spain has, that's what Germany has. They can change the players, they can take off their star players and put somebody else. I think the managers are not afraid to take off star players and replace them with other Absolutely. players. But I think with England, these guys are afraid to take off the star players just in case they lose. They say, why do you take off Harry Kane? But yeah, yeah, yeah. if you take off Harry Kane <laughs> and you win, it still doesn't matter. If you lose, it still will make a difference because you, you wanted to try something to, to win the game. And that's what football is about. It's about taking risk to win that game. And I think sometimes he's too scared to take the risk. Holland, uh, for the first time in so many years, after the days of the Gullets, uh, we, we had the right, the right cars and the Gullets and the Markov and Bastins and uh, um, all these great players that I'm talking about, the Edgar Davids and um, the, the list goes on and on, the Philip Kalkus coming later to join the team. Um, they've had always had a massive well talented squad in Holland obviously um, you can't talk about Euros without talking about Holland but for the first time in so many years um, they're in the quarters now uh, yesterday uh, they played well against um, I like them a, a very well oil side um, Romania but I like, they, I like they, Holland Javi, I think... Javi Simans uh, seems to uh, move well with, with Cody Gakbo played amazingly on the night and yeah. um could it be? Could I, it be the year for Holland? They are one of my teams that I picked to win it. Mm. They are one of the teams that I picked to win to win to win the US to shock um the world because I believe that well on paper nobody was was ever gonna pick them. Yeah. But I think they, they they didn't have two of the best players also. No, they didn't. Yeah, the lead and yeah. uh, Faka De Young yeah. was not was not there. And I feel I feel it's. A, I feel this is the first time I think Holland is a squad as a team. Yeah, I think you can see it. You can see that. Yeah. You can see how they play. You can see the uh, wine wine jars. But there's no proper number nine in that team. So you you want you you want to ask yourself and wonder if Gakpo comes against some of the top defenders in those wide areas, can he still find room and space to <laughs> operate? Because watching last night's game. It felt like almost all the attack was coming through him, you know. Yeah, yes, I don't have a, I don't think they've had a top number nine for a very long time, though. Holland actually has got one of the best football fans in the world as well. So I can imagine what the stadium is going to be. It's going Orange to be and they were going to have the, the Tukai. I, I, I need also. to get my uh, Dutch Dutch jersey for the of, game. Of course, you need yeah, to I get need that to, one. I need to get my Dutch jersey <laughs> for the game. You definitely need that one. But um, um, finally, before we go, which which team and which player? Has impressed you the most? I think a few players. I think Musiala from Germany. Yeah. I think his drive, the way he goes past players, mm. the way he deals with the game, the way he carries the game on his shoulders. I think he's he's been very good in tournament. I think um, to be fair, I think some of the Romanian players have been mm. they've not been bad, but there's no specific standard. But they've yeah. done okay. But I think. Um, um, the Georgian players were, have been very. A lot of people did not expect yeah. that from them, so I think they'd be very good. But for me, Nico Williams, Lamin uh, Lamin uh, Musiala, I think Adegulan has been has been good. Mm -hmm. I think he's played well. Um, for Portugal, I think the Portugal are still finding their way. Yeah, I've not seen anybody. 
exceptional. Isn't yeah, it? exceptional in the Portuguese team and the French team too. I've not seen anyone. Not really. The 17th edition of the Euros uh, 2024 being played in Germany. Uh, big games coming up, of course. Germany versus Spain. What a mouth-watering game. I can't wait for that game. And I know you can't wait for that game as well. Um, also, we've got another big one. We've got France and Portugal. Oof, old rivalries coming together for that game. It's going to be another big one. France really having lived up to expectation. Could that be the game they turn up? Kylian Mbappe, the man with the mask. Could he come off the mask or could he do something uh, for France as well? We've got England play Switzerland. England has underperformed, even though they're in the quarterfinals. Uh, we're yet to see uh, if England can leave up or bring it to life. Uh, hopefully, the Swiss also uh, play a good game and we're expecting to see a very, very a good game. Got another good one as well. Netherlands, the Holland uh, versus Turkey. Turkey first time in the quarterfinals of the Euros. Another good game. Uh, we're looking forward to. We're going to react after um, that all these games and we're bringing another episode very soon well we just hope that uh, these euros from now we're going to see the most cracking uh, players and the teams leaving up to their names and expectations and glory of football uh, hopefully we'll bring you all the best it's been good my name is Kojo Ajayjima thank you for watching mm -hmm.